Hey everyone, we're going to see how to properly store password data uh, using Node.js and Couchbase server as our NoSQL database. Uh, so to make this happen, and I'll go through what, why we're doing this and what we're doing as we go along, uh, but the first thing we want to start off uh, by doing is creating a new Node.js project. So I do have my terminal open and I'm going to be creating this project on my desktop. I'm going to say make directory my project and I'm going to navigate into that project. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to initialize a new Node.js application. This could be done numerous ways. You could use npm, you can use yarn, you can use something else. I'm going to be using yarn. So I'm going to say yarn init and then I'm going to walk through each one of the questions using the default answer. And this will create my package.json file. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to install each of the dependencies for this project. Um, so again, the packages will be the same for no, uh, npm and yarn, uh, just the commands will be slightly different. So I'm going to say yarn add couchbase uuid and bcrypt.js. All right, with the, with the dependencies uh, downloaded, uh, the next thing we want to do is probably uh, create a file that we're going to be working with as far as our Node.js application goes. Uh, so generally you would call this file an app.js file. Really you can name it whatever you want, uh, but we're going to go ahead and name it app.js. So I'm going to say touch app.js. Uh, so our project structure will look something like this, where all of our code is going to be in the app.js file. Now what we want to do is we want to open up this project in our text editor of choice. I'm going to be using Atom by GitHub, but you could really use whatever you want. Before we start working with actual uh, Couchbase code or Node.js code uh, or anything along those lines, actual logic I mean, we want to go ahead and, and import those dependencies that we downloaded just now. Uh, so we can say the following, var Couchbase equals require Couchbase. We can say var bcrypt equals require bcrypt.js, then var UUID equals require UUID. Uh, so let me explain each one of these dependencies. Uh, so Couchbase is going to allow us to interface with the Couchbase database. We're going to be using UUID to generate unique uh, document key values. And then we're going to be using bcrypt.js to hash our passwords for safe storage. And I say hash because we don't want to encrypt passwords because if we encrypt, that leaves the assumption that they could be decrypted. Whereas hashes, you don't decrypt hashes, and they're not plain text either. And we're gonna we're gonna experience uh, what it will look like in just a moment. Now, if I take a turn here and I go to my Couchbase administrative dashboard, um, I what we want to do is we want to create a bucket for our application. The bucket I'm gonna be using is called Example. Uh, you can create one, call it whatever you want. My bucket has no data in it right now, uh, but it will, and we're gonna see that in just a second. So going back to our code, uh, what we want to do is first we want to establish a connection to our Couchbase cluster and then open up that bucket. So we can say the following, var cluster equals new Couchbase.cluster and we're going to pass it in a URL. So we're going to say Couchbase colon slash slash and in my case Couchbase is actually being hosted on a different computer and I'm going to type in the IP address here. So you just need to type in one node uh, for your cluster. If your cluster has more than one node in it, it doesn't matter what node you choose. Uh, just choose one of them. Now to open up a bucket, we would say var bucket equals cluster dot open bucket and we pr provide example and that example has no password. Uh, we could actually just omit it completely. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to generate some data. So we want to figure out what we want to save here. So what we can say is we can say uh, var data equals, and for data we can say username equals, let's say, nraboy. And then in this case, the password will be one, two, three, let's just call it password, the classic password example on people. I, this ha actually happens quite a bit still and it's surprising, but there are a lot of people who just use their passwords and call it just password. Uh, so let's just play along with that idea. Uh, so that's the data we plan on saving. Very simple. 
uh, what we can do now is we can say bucket dot, let's go ahead and say upsert actually, uh, because we're going to be running this application several times. Um, so an upsert will create a piece of data if it does not exist, otherwise it will replace it. Uh, so for the key, uh, we're going to use that unique generated value. So we're going to actually say UUID dot V4, and that'll create our U unique ID value. And then we want to pass in the data. So we're going to say data and then a callback. So we're going to say function and then that we can include error or result. All right, so inside of this callback, now we can see whether or not this thing failed or if it succeeded. Um, so the first thing we can do is we can say, uh, well, we don't care about errors. We're just going to assume that it succeeds. Um, so what we want to do is just leave it at that for now. Let's just run it as is. Uh, so in theory, this should save it to Couchbase and it'll be the only document that exists. So we can say node app.js and it should be done. So let's, let's go ahead and check it out. So it did save it. Um, it saved enter boy and password and it didn't exit out because we never added any kind of exit command to it. So I'll close out. Uh, going back to Couchbase dashboard, here's the u unique ID value that was generated. Again, we have a plain text password. We don't want plain text passwords because then any anyone could go into their administrative portal um, who ha who is an admin of this database and just start stealing passwords if they're being if they want to be malicious. Um, so we're gonna keep them out of this. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna make use of bcrypt.js. Uh, so to make use of bcrypt.js, so instead of our password being password now, just a just a string value, what we're actually gonna say is bcrypt, and I know I I misspelled it up here bcrypt and we're going to say hash sync so this is the synchronous hash function and we're going to say password uh, and then we're going to use a, a 10 byte salt all right so we now should have a hashed password uh, inside of our data and we're going to verify that so we're actually going to say bucket dot get and to, to make this successful, we actually have to pull this out now because if I call UUID v4 in here again, we're just going to get a different UUID value. So let's say var id equals UUID.v4. We're going to use id in here. And let's use id in here. All right. So we're going to set a callback function again. Error result. And we're going to say, uh, we're going we're gonna to print out uh, what the password is. Or we're just going to print out that whole document. So we're going to say console.log json.stringify. Uh, let's go ahead and say result and see what we get back. So I'm going to run it. All right, so you can see uh, it has my username, but now it has this crazy, crazy funny value for the password. And we can verify that in the dashboard here if I refresh. Oh, it created a new one because um, these are uni unique, I val unique ID values again. Uh, so we do have this this value, um, and it's it's hashed. All right. So now we need to be able to compare our password in case we try to enter a password and we want to validate that it's correct. We want to validate it for correctness, and we can actually use uh, the compare function as part of this bcrypt library. Uh, so let's go ahead and try it out. So we're going to say console.log. I'm going to say password match. We're just going to have a string here. Uh, let's say bcrypt dot compare sync. And let's go ahead and say this is the wrong password. We're providing a wrong password to compare against. So it could be anything if we want. Um, and then the next value is we want the value that was actually stored. So result dot password. So this is the value that was stored in Couchbase. Uh, as of line 10, semicolon. Uh, so we also want to compare the correct value. So we're going to copy this line. Our actual password is password. Uh, so we're going to compare. So in theory, one of them, the first one should be false. The second one should be true. So let's go ahead and try it out. So we did get an error. Uh, let's go ahead and check it out. 
Um, we have illegal arguments here. So the reason why we have illegal arguments is because the data that I'm assuming we returned was not the data that was actually returned. So if we look at this previous response, you'll notice that we have a, a compare and swap value at CAS, but we also have a value. And inside of value is our actual object. So let's go ahead and give it another try. Instead of result.password, we're going to say result.value.password. I'm going to save it and we're going to try it again. So this time uh, it returned accurately. Uh, so the first password, of course, was wrong. The second password, of course, uh, was correct. Uh, so going back in the Couchbase dashboard, we should have a few passwords created at this point. Um, they're all going to be different, which is good. Uh, because if anyone were to uh, gain malicious access to this database and look at these password data, there's not a whole lot they can do with this hashed password. Um, if, if it was a plain text string, it, it would be very bad for your business. But since it's hashed, it's safe, um, and you can go about doing your business as normal. And it really didn't take a whole lot of extra stuff. We were able to use bcrypt. So bcrypt is common for, for a lot of different programming technologies. Um, and it was very easy to use.